The grand city of Paris looked like a beautiful painting. It was a spring festival, so all the shop owners were out and about setting up their brightly colored tents, eager to show the most unique and impressive display. Hey guys, check this out. Alia jabbed her thumb, noticing a purplish-blue tent. Wish-granting and fortune-telling for all who dared to enter. Marinette curiously read the sign. What do you think, Nino? Alia teased. Brave enough to hear your future? Are you kidding? Let's go, dudes. Nino enthusiastically held the tent flap open as Alia, Marinette, and Adrian entered. The tent was small, and there were many banners and ribbons streamed across the ceiling. In the center of the room there was a table draped in a purple tablecloth. In the middle of the table sat a crystal ball resting on its marble case. I can't believe your dad was cool enough to let you come to the spring festival today. I can't believe your dad was cool enough to let you come to the spring festival today, Alia expressed to Adrian. He smiled ruefully. Yeah, maybe someday he'll let me go out by myself. He glanced at his apish bodyguard who was peeking through the doorway at him. The gypsy seemed to appear out of nowhere. Welcome! Come in and discover your destiny. My name is Kezia. She had a mane of wavy black hair. A purple turban was wrapped around the crown of her head. Her deep-colored robes were covered with amulets and charms. Who would like to go first? Olive smirked. Marinette, you should see what your future is. What? She stuttered, trying to back away. No, no way! Someone else can go! Her friends all clamored in agreement, and before she knew what was happening, Alia shoved her into a chair and pressed some coins into Kezia's hand. She slowly sat down across from Marinette at the purple draped table. She kept her head high, like she was worried about her turban falling off her head. Kezia closed her eyes and began to divinate. Marinette, not being able to help herself, eagerly looked into the crystal ball. I see... Love? True love. Kezia spoke as if she was translating something someone was whispering in her ear. Marinette turned bright red, trying not to notice Adrian intently watching behind her. She looked again at the crystal ball. She saw someone inside it, walking towards her. You will find your truth where you least expect it. The person in the crystal ball was blonde. Marinette almost fell out of her chair as she recognized Adrian. She looked closer. He was wearing black. Wait, could Adrian see what she was seeing? His name will be... Okay, Marinette jumped away. Thank you, I think I left my oven on. She rushed out of the tent so quickly she didn't notice the crystal ball being knocked from its base. Kezia watched with wide eyes as her crystal ball rolled off the table and split clean down the middle as it landed on the floor. She fell to her knees and sorrowfully picked up the two pieces. Marinette herself hid behind her parents' bakery tent with her head in her hands. Oh, Tiki, I totally lost it. What am I going to say? She cried to her tiny friend. Her why? Oh, Tiki, I totally lost it. What am I going to say to Alia? She cried to her tiny friend. Her eyes widened. What if Adrian asks about it? Tiki sighed and flew in front of her face and touched her tiny paws to Marinette's hand. She said, It's okay, Marinette. They're your friends. They'll understand. Marinette voiced her real concern. Do you think Adrian could see what I saw in the crystal ball? No, Tiki said confidently. I know about. She suddenly looked up and rushed to hide in Marinette's purse. Marinette looked up. Adrian had found her. Hey, he said, sitting down next to her. Did you fix your oven? Adrian smiled. Yeah. Marinette grinned sheepishly. Why didn't you tell us that you don't like fortune tellers? I don't. I mean, I do. It's just complicated, she sighed. Well, I hope in the future you'll remember that we'll always listen to anything you need to tell us. Marinette blushed and looked down into her lap. Come join us, Adrian invited. Ollie is still looking for you. He stood up and offered a hand, and Marinette took it. Deep in Hawk Moth's lair, the supervillain smiled with sick sweetness. This unfortunate fortune teller. She has such a sharp mind, but no one appreciates her. What a perfect prey for my Akuma. She just might be the one to bring down Ladybug. He selected a butterfly from his flock and cupped it in his hands. He carefully infused its wings with dark power and sent it away through the window. Go, my little Akuma, and evilize her. Back in the gypsy's tent, the black butterfly fluttered inside. It landed on the glass pieces of the crystal ball and mended them together. The gypsy looked up. There was a voice speaking in her head. 
Fortune teller, I am Hawk Moth. No one appreciates your talents. I am giving you the ability to prove the truth of your soothsaying. In return, you must deliver to me Ladybug and Cat Noir's miraculouses. Do we have a deal? It shall be done, Hawk Moth. Fortune teller stood. She could feel the power flowing through her veins. She looked down at herself and realized it was transforming her. She smiled maliciously. When Marinette and Adrian came out from behind the yellow tent, something large flew over their heads. They looked up. It was Kezia, her massive black hair now flecked with white. Her skin turned blue and her robes were now black. She flew on her magic carpet and roared, Where is Marinette? Adrian's jaw dropped. He shoved Marinette back inside the tent and muttered something about his upcoming photo shoot. Marinette stood staring, dumbfounded after him. Tiki shot out of her purse. Marinette, hurry! Marinette snapped out of it. You're right, Tiki, spots on! Yeah, she cried as she felt Tiki transforming her. The next moment, Ladybug was racing out of the tent to help Cat Noir. Meanwhile, Cat Noir was confronting Fortune Teller. He kept up behind her and tried to snatch the crystal ball out of her hands. She pulled it out of his reach. Having missed his target, Cat Noir flew way past his mark and landed sprawled on the road. Yikes, he chuckled. Guess you saw that coming? When Ladybug arrived, she landed next to Cat Noir. He turned to smile at her. Right on time, milady. Hey, Cat Noir, I hope you didn't have to wait too long. Not long at all, milady. Shall we begin? He grinned. Ladybug smiled too and nodded. They charged at Fortune Teller, who threw an innumerable amount of crystal balls at them. Ladybug and Cat Noir dodged them flawlessly, but when Ladybug turned to see where they landed, she gawked. A single crystal ball hit an unsuspecting Parisian, who wasn't fast enough. The poor girl vanished into thin air. Cat Noir, she cried. We have to get her away from the festival. Cat Noir nodded. He propelled himself up, using his staff, calling, Here, witchy, come and get me. Insulted, Fortune Teller growled and chased after him, flying on her purple carpet. Ladybug smiled and followed after them.